Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at the DARPA Robotics Challenge, the 2015 edition in Pomona, California, with Aaron Ames, who's a professor at Georgia Tech and has worked on this robot that's standing That's the right. Science. That's right. So this robot was developed in collaboration between SRI Robotics and my lab, Amber Lab, and the idea is to demonstrate efficient locomotion. So efficiency is broken down to lots of components, everything from the hardware side to the software side, and, and more importantly, the marriage and unity of the two. So that was the goal of this project. So, so I assume when you're, and, and just to be clear, you're using a, a phenomenally tiny amount of power to run this robot. A ridiculous amount. I mean, we're, we're pulling right now, we're pulling 400 watts, so it's like seven, you know, some light bulbs. I mean, it's an incredibly small amount. So this is a completely self-contained robotic uh, device with the batteries on there, everything else. The only cord you see is just to make sure we don't break it, and the communication cord just to talk to the robot. So very small amounts of power, yeah. Um, so what, you know, I know if you build a robot out of like stepper motors and all that kind of stuff, you're going to not get anywhere near this kind of power because you're going to go through big light loads in no time. That's right. What, what's, what's fundamentally different about this robot than what I built at home? Right, right. So there's a couple important novel aspects on the mechanical front. And it's actually, again, the mechanics and the software together. But on the mechanical front, there's the motors themselves. So I actually use uh, almost hobby motors. I mean, these aren't like million dollar motors. Mm -hmm. But the importance is how you take that motor power and translate it to the joint level, right? So joints move much slower than motors want to spin efficiently. So you have to bring it down to the joint level. And, and to do that, you have to use gearboxes. But the problem is you hit it, take a huge efficiency hit in those gearboxes. So one of the first novel components is in the gearboxes themselves. It's a novel gearbox designed by SRI Robotics that's over 90% efficient. Meaning you, you keep 90% of the power you're transferring through these gearboxes. So that's the first mention. So 90% of the power that comes into the motor ends up in the joint? Or? That's exactly right. Okay. So basically 90% of what you're doing on the motor is getting to the joint. You're not losing all this stuff in the middle, transmitting to the joint, right? And bringing it down to speeds that the robot wants to work at, okay. right? So that's the first thing. And the second major part of this is the spring. So if you see different than most robots you'll see today, is there's actually springs in those ankles down there, and you can see them compressing, passive springs. So the idea is when you walk, you actually shock the ground, right? So if you don't absorb that shock, you lose energy. It's just like if you drop a punk of clay on the ground, mm -hmm. it will shock down and, and that's it, right? But if you put some elasticity in it, what happens? It bounces for a long yeah. time. So we're using that elasticity or that springiness in the springs to rebound energy back into the gate as we're going. So, so it's mimicking like the, the, the back of a dog's foot or the human arm, exactly. something like that. Our tendons okay. store energy and release it. Our muscles store energy and release it. So we're doing that and that, that storage and release. And then when, when we're releasing power through the motors, we're also efficient. So we get these two for on the efficiency front, right? So then that means the key is what? The key is to tie it all together. Because if you don't use springs right, imagine standing on squashy ground. Ground, right, you're just going to oscillate yourself to death. Double pogo. That's right, double pogo. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's not easy. It's really, really hard from the control, the algorithm side. So you have to bring those things together, and that's where dynamics comes in. So if you try to do things static, like if you try to just take, stand on a pogo stick and don't move, how successful are you going to be? It's, uh, you're not going to have a good time. You're going to you're going to fall over. It's going to be all over, right? Yeah. So you have to jump. You have to bounce, right? So in some sense, we're utilizing the dynamics of the system, this model of the system, to bring it together to bounce off those springs and bring the energy back in through the control and the algorithm of the brain that's running on the system. Very cool. Okay, so then how autonomous is this, is this robot right now? So right now the objective was just really efficient walking. How close can humans can we get, right? How, how, how can we bridge the gap? And, and so that's it. Walk and, and turn with the remote control. So it's actually a remote control pod. I'm telling you, the, the yeah. coolest game you've ever played is controlling a robot with a remote control while it walks on a treadmill. He's so, using an Xbox controller, yeah. it looks like. Yeah, exactly, exactly okay. what it is. So fortunately, the setup's a little expensive. You can't download it at the App Store, but, but it's a pretty cool experience. So that's what we're doing right now for heading control. So the dynamics is steering, and we're basically steering it on this treadmill right now. We can also use sensors to do this, and there's a lot of other options. So that's the objective. Now, if we want to do more things, the framework is founded in mathematics, actually. It's really rigorous, so we can extend it to lots of areas in the future. But it's meant to be kind of a glimpse of what's next in robots. You know? Cool. Thanks so much, Aaron. It's a pleasure. It was great to talk to you, and we will have more from Jarvis Robotics Challenge on Tested Real soon. See you guys later.